If you follow me on the Twitter, you know that I'm not a big fan of award shows in general, but all the talk post Golden Globes this week is about Oprah Winfrey potentially running for president in 2020. Mainstream media is in love with the idea of Oprah for president and CNN, the New York Times, Time Magazine, and a slew of others have all already run think pieces on her chances in just three short years. Hollywood, of course, is also in love with the idea. The conscience of lefty Hollywood, Jimmy Kimmel, has already said that he's on board with Oprah 2020. And NBC even tweeted from their official account at NBC that Oprah is our next president, though they eventually deleted the tweet. Make no doubt the elite class that was dealt a swift blow by the election of Trump in 2016 will quickly fall in line if Oprah decides to make a run for 2020. Oprah has an absolutely remarkable life story. She grew up in a Milwaukee boarding house in extreme poverty. She survived absolutely horrific physical and sexual abuse, including being raped by her own cousin when she was only nine years old. From these unimaginably difficult beginnings, Oprah eventually made it to local news in Chicago and then on to her syndicated talk show, which not only changed the TV landscape, but had a cultural relevance unlike almost anything in the pre-internet age. Every politician, pop culture icon, an ordinary person doing something extraordinary seemed to make it to Oprah's couch. Since she ended the talk show seven years ago, Oprah's had many professional ups and downs, continuing to navigate Hollywood, starting her own TV network own, which hasn't quite caught on, doing plenty of charity work, and of course, and perhaps most importantly, always making time to eat bread with very excited strangers around a fancy table in a forest. As for Oprah's politics, I'm not sure anyone other than Oprah herself has a full view of them. She was a big Obama supporter during his first two campaigns, and I have no doubt that she falls on the Democrat progressive side of things. How she falls specifically on every issue, I'm not totally sure, but we seem to be veering towards a cliff where the issues will have almost nothing to do with who gets elected. The cult of personality we're building around politicians and what that means for the health of our society in the long term is quickly becoming a massive problem that's hidden in plain sight. I'm pretty sure I don't have to say much on the cult of personality that is Donald Trump. Make no mistake, whether you love or hate Donald Trump, we elected a reality TV star, a man created by and now hated by the mainstream media. Trump's rise used all the tools of the media against itself, and that's why right now the media is endlessly looking to destroy him. They want their narrative and control back. Notice the shift in TV coverage and articles about Trump in the last two weeks or so. It's shifted from endless Russia stories to Trump's mental health. In most cases, the people writing these stories are the same people who said that stories about Hillary's health were conspiracy theories. Even after she collapsed and was dragged into an SUV by security guards that autumn day in New York City. So what we have right now is a cult of personality, Trump, versus the cult of the media. This has made a lot of people a lot of money. As long as they keep churning out articles and think pieces, true or not, people do get paid. To this end, Trump is their perfect foil. He has no shortage of tweets to send out and people to mock. So we've got a match made in hell playing right in front of all of our eyes. Now back to Oprah for a moment. Oprah is basically the exact reverse of Trump, even at the identity politics level. She is a black woman and he is a white man. She grew up poor, he grew up rich. But more importantly than these, she says all of the right things. She talks about love and spirituality and is loved by the Hollywood and media class as one of their own. Trump, on the other hand, is their perfect enemy as if they had written the script themselves. Alas, Trump was one of their own until he became too powerful and now he is enemy number one because they've lost control of the narrative. Their hope is that they can win some of that narrative back with another celebrity who will play by their rules, but I think that this is short-sighted at best and disastrous at worst. Just imagine what kind of insane, polarizing, sensationalized lunacy the potential matchup of Trump versus Oprah will lead to as we head into 2020. It'll be great for clicks and ratings, but it'll be terrible for ideas and debate. You thought Hillary versus Trump was polarizing? Just wait until Trump and Oprah battle it out in the Thunderdome on primetime television. Sadly, it doesn't look like we'll ever turn back to being governed as our founders intended with a limited federal government and strong states that empower people to control their lives at the local level. 
While Trump has done some good work in limiting the power of the federal government, he's obviously happy to govern by executive action as Congress cedes more and more of their duties to the executive branch instead of the legislative branch where laws are supposed to be written. His Justice Department, too, is happy to step on the Tenth Amendment and allow the federal government to trample on states' rights. Just look at Attorney General Jeff Sessions' decision to allow the feds to crack down on states' ability to legalize marijuana. So to sum up, we'll have a president that will most likely be a celebrity, whether it's Trump or Oprah or Mark Cuban or The Rock, along with an executive branch that'll continue growing and growing in power. This cult of personality will continually put people into office, not on what they believe and whether they understand or even care about how government is supposed to work, but rather by what they make us feel and how they can manipulate us into thinking exactly as they do. That feeling, coupled with the growing power of the office of the president, is a recipe for the authoritarian control we all should be wary of. The only way to fight this tide of celebrity-induced idiocracy is to get involved now before it's too late. Either that or get ready to bow to Supreme Leader Justin Bieber in 2024.